Hi, this is Zach May with the Bulletin Board Heroes here at Zach's Traders Cafe for Thursday the 24th of August and starting off with the FTSE 100 where there was bullish divergence after the narrow uh, bear trap for August versus the July low and we've had a little bit of a, a rebound, I suppose the low area around 72.20 and uh, we peaked out today so far. 73.86. One hopes that that's not the peak because we were looking for at least a rebound up to the uh, early July or mid-July support there uh, around 7400 and uh, that might have been it but an end of day close through 7400 could still give us the 50 day line at 7500. On the downside really don't want that November uptrend line currently at 7270 to be broken anytime soon and we'd like also to see the RSI now at 39 get back above neutral 50 to show us that we're back in a positive frame of mind. If we do break 72.70, worst case scenario at the moment is 71.50, which is the floor of that uh, falling February trend channel. On to the DAX and uh, here uh, making uh, some attempt to get back through the 50 day line, but so far we failed a bit like the uh, FTSEs failed intraday. That 50 day line currently around 16,000, we need an end of day close above that to avoid potentially either breaking that uptrend line from last year or hitting the 200 day moving average at 15,400. RSI in the mid 40s are still in the danger zone until we get back above or if we get back above that 50 day moving average. On to the Dow and the Dow is uh, also near its 50 day line that's uh, 34,600. That was or that area was the old resistance in June and July and so it's quite a key area. Below recent support, 34,200, let's say, there's the risk also, as in the case of the DAX, that we might have to test the floor of that rising trend channel from last year. And the 200-day line, 33,700. RSI at 41, so really um, in the bearish sphere, but uh, really not much of a hint either way. Moving on to Bitcoin, where we last left this market very oversold. RSI has actually finally bounced back above the, the 20 area or sub 20 area. So uh, the charting kind of worked there, i.e. bouncing off the floor of that rising trend channel from last year and also bouncing on the basis that it was very oversold. Still the risk of a test at some point of the old June support there around uh, 24,900. But at the moment, it looks like we might have got away with it in terms of the downside and hitting the floor of that channel and then rebounding. If you're more uh, squeamish, you'd wait for an end of day close back above the 200 day line at 27,400 and the RSI to get back above 30, but we're assuming that the worst is finally over. Moving on to the stocks and starting off with Ajax, which uh, was highlighted yesterday. We've had an unfilled gap to the upside through the 50 day moving average today, which is rather impressive above that gap floor around six and three quarters. Looking for the 200 day line initially around eight and three quarters and then up to 11 pence maybe by the end of next month. So it's a bear trap gap reversal and uh, one of the prime charting setups with the bullish divergence there with the lower lows for August, but higher RSI or at least equal RSI to the June reading. On to um, Amala, which is the uh, r another potential uh, rebound candidate. Here you can see that um, we had a sideways shuffle above the 50 day moving average, which tends to be a good signal. And uh, that has so far proved to be the case. We were previously looking for 0.25. So far, we've peaked um, at only 0.22 and a half. But uh, maybe there's another chance while we remain above the uh, 50 day line around 0.1 for the shares to get up to 0.25 by the end of next month. Bullish divergence there as well. That started off the turnaround after a quite a long time in the wilderness. One of the best looking uh, turnaround situations at the moment is Artemis and that's set on the basis of the uh, unfilled gap to the upside that we had to start the rally back in June uh, which is uh, as regular viewers will know is uh, one of our favorite setups. Now we've had two unfilled gaps to the upside in a row which is uh, almost unheard of in current uh, horrible stock market conditions. The initial target we had here was around uh, 1.45 and we're now looking for 1.8 by the end of next month or even sooner given the uh, wonderful turnaround that we've had as a sort of a saucer shaped inverted head and shoulders uh, pattern there so all pretty good and we also had uh, a we've got an uptrend line in the RSI window as well to add to the momentum but uh, those two gap up days this week pretty impressive. 
Uh, on to Ben's Creek, where maybe uh, we've got the final turnaround here that we've been waiting for so long. Broken out of that wedge formation from January and broken above the 50-day moving average around 13 and a half. Above that 50-day line, looking for at least the 200-day moving average at uh, 19 pence and then a, maybe a best case scenario up to 23 pence at the top of that uh, rising trend channel base by the end of next month. Initially, though, we've got uh, the gaps down that we had back in June to grapple with. So let's see if the shares can give us a decent end of day close above 17 pence to uh, under, underline the recovery prospects for the stock. Moving on to... Um, Clean Tech Lithium, where there's another uh, upgrade, this time at Francisco Basin. Uh, we've got an unfilled gap to the upside above the 200-day uh, uh, moving average, which is rising. Also, that uh, sideways shuffle above the 50-day line, a rising 50-day line, and the bear trap uh, uh, reversal that we had back in July. So lots of decent signals there, technical signals, uh, suggesting that uh, above the 200-day line at 50p, we're looking for 70 pence at the... Uh, March resistance line projection just a few months ago. Onto a stock which um, I haven't looked at for a while now. It's uh, Clean Tech, uh, sorry, not Clean Tech Lithium, it's uh, Sharrock Gold, in fact. We just looked at that one. Uh, here we've got a bear trap rebound in the making. Uh, we've got bullish divergence there with the lower August lows, but higher RSI trace. And uh, decent end of day or end of week close above the seven pence level could get us back in the recent into the recent range, which is basically seven to 11 pence and 11 pence maybe by the end of next month. Obviously, we don't want to see any fresh lows below six and a half in the meantime, but hopefully with that RSI divergence, we are okay. On to future metals. And uh, here the picture is uh, tentatively one of recovery. We've got a, an uptrend line, a bullish divergence line there. We had a gap to the upside as well. So good setup there, but we've fallen slightly flat. Filled the gap there at the beginning of the month around 1.8 pence. Above 1.8 pence, we're looking for as high as 3.2 pence on the basis that we've gapped up again. So it looks like it may be second time lucky. If you're cautious, maybe wait for an end of day close above the 50 day line at 2.15. But so far, looks as though with that second gap and the bullish divergence, we could make it to 3.2 pence. Hydrogen Utopia is next. Uh, and uh, here we've had a rebound today after the uh, uh, appointment of Simon Mann as uh, non executive chairman. It's so a higher low there for the shares. Bullish divergence. Just want to see the shares on the right side of 4p so we can get up to 7 pence initially, ideally by the end of next month or hopefully a bit sooner than that. Intelligent ultrasound is on the uh, cards next. And here uh, we've got a rising 200-day uh, line. Uh, we had a bit of a bear trap uh, back in July but remained above the top of that uh, gap higher, the bear trap gap reversal that we had in April. End of day close through 12 and a half pence should be enough to get the shares up to retesting April resistance at 17 pence by the end of next month. On to uh, Mobility One and here another uh, tentative turnaround. We broke higher earlier in the month but then came back to test the breakout point above 4.2 pence looking for at least obviously a retest of recent 6 pence resistance. Bigger picture target over the next one to two months maybe as high as 9.5 while we remain above. Four pence on MBO. Stock which uh, doesn't get much airtime here or anywhere else is uh, Mal Malvern and uh, or Malvern, in fact. And uh, here you can see the uh, picture is of a rising trend channel. We've had that in place since uh, the summer of 21. Top of that channel heading for 34 pence, and we're looking for that over the next couple of months while we remain above recent resistance at 16 and a half pence. But nice sideways consolidation, step consolidation there suggesting we will get some traction. On to Plexus, where uh, we had a rather ambitious target uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, we managed to gap up through that target. Current position is that uh, above the target at around uh, 5.8 pence or 5.7 pence, probably to be more accurate, looking for a fresh leg to the upside, maybe taking the shares up to 7.5 pence over the next two to four weeks, powered by that massive unfilled gap to the upside to start the week. Interesting pattern at the next stock, and uh, it's Tecmar. Here we had a um, gap to the upside uh, at the beginning of the month, unfilled gap to the upside, got a U-shaped bull flag, rising 50 and 200-day moving averages, a golden cross also this month. That suggests that hopefully above the uh, 12 pence area, which is uh, what was late July resistance and the gap floor, looking for 20 pence by the end of next month. 
onto tertiary and uh, position here is the stock trying to get some um, support here at the lower levels but there is bullish divergence there so the lower lows for august higher rsi trace probably want to see an end of day close through the uh, 50 day line at around uh, 0.1 pence above that looking for a recovery towards the 200 day moving average at 0.13 but obviously uh, it's rather early days on that one Onto a stock which has probably got the best uh, price action uh, around, uh, Vino, otherwise known as Virgin Wines. And uh, here you can see that um, with the whole of August has been, uh, uh, we've had up days or, or sideways days on every day. So no red candles at all in August, no hardly any, any in July either. Uh, current view is that uh, above the recent uh, gap floor, around 39 pence, we're heading up to as high as 52 pence, but it's just the strength. Of that, uh, of those candles, which really is a standout for Virgin Wines at the moment, must be something interesting going on there. We hope. Finishing off with Valerix, and uh, here, in the wake of their RNS today, looks like we've got a rally within this falling wedge. Just want to see the shares above seven pence. If they can do that, then we could fill the gap up to nine or ten pence over the next couple of weeks. So we've got the uh, uptrend line in the RSI window to help things along probably the best case there would be a move up to uh, that resistance line there top of the triangle from may that's it for me today more updates tomorrow